Everybody, this is Tim Green with Rattle Magazine. Welcome to Poetry Spot Live, our Sunday morning news show dedicated to exploring current events through the lens of poetry. I almost forgot what we were doing for a second because we do these kind of things three times a week. And uh, this is Poetry Spot Live. It's not one of the other ones. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, this is an open mic show mostly for your poems about current events, which means, um, you know, something that's in the news right now or in the last week or two. Okay, and um, if it's something that's like a recurring event, like if you have a Thanksgiving poem you want to share, because this is Thanksgiving week in the U.S., that's older, feel free to share that, Um, and um, whatever you'd like to do. So to to join in, let me show you how it's done. Um, First, if you haven't submitted your poem, if you submitted it to um, Poet Respond through Submittable, um, we publish one poem a week every Sunday on Submittable, or, you know, that was submitted through Submittable. A couple hundred people submit them every uh, Sunday. If you did that, you're good to go and just give me a call. Uh, But if you didn't, send it to openmic at rattle.com right now. So that's openmic, openmic at rattle.com. And um, then what you do is send me a chat message over Skype to rattle poetry, all one word. You'll pull up on my screen and I will call you when the time is right. The other option is to uh, join by phone. The phone number is 818-850-7727. That's 818-850-7727 on the screen there. Just call, let it ring a few times. You'll appear in my call list as long as you don't have a caller ID blocking. And uh, then we'll call you back when the time is right. Um, if you do have caller ID blocking, just email me your phone number to uh, openmicatrattle.com, and I can just call you up that way. Uh, but this way, if you're on the call list, I know you're here waiting for your call, which is always a good thing. Um, now, before we begin, we'd like to... Um, share the poem that we actually published this morning and uh, let me find um, the poet which is uh, Alejandro Escudé who has been a guest on the Rattlecast back in September he submits a poem literally every week and uh, he's a great poet so we end up publishing him pretty frequently Um, I think this is the second time this year we published one of his poems for Poets Respond and maybe the um, I don't know, sixth or seventh time overall over the last five years. Um, so let's give Alejandro a call and see how he's doing this morning. So the phone is ringing now. We're trying to connect anyway. Well, it is not connecting right now. I don't know. The Sunday morning show seems to have more technical problems than uh, other other times. Let me try to send him a chat message. Sometimes people have the ringers off. Um, but we have someone else we could call, too. So um, I know uh, she's there. Let's see. Let me make sure I have the right uh, address. Yeah. So um, definitely... This is the right place. We'll try them again later. Let's um before we do that then, I'm gonna call up um Michelle Bidding. Michelle has a um poem she wanted to share, a video poem she made with uh, Jerry Garcia, another local LA poet. Um it's a current events. They have two um videos they made together. And um let me call up Michelle Bidding then first. Then we'll call up Alejandro, we'll try him again in a little bit. If he if he's not available, I'll just read the poem for you myself but let's call up a michelle hey michelle how you doing i'm great yeah i can hear you and see you and 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 so can everything i had you on mute but now you're unmuted um so how how have you been doing it's been a long time i haven't seen you in a while with all the um you know we you know we're used to do events in la all the time together and uh it's been a while (laughs) yeah um yeah just a lot going on like everybody and and um especially so in a in a strange time but um yeah a lot of teaching and um wondering and wandering and um writing and yeah trying to 
continue to raise my family. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, so what did you, can you explain what you and Jerry Garcia did with these um, two video poems? Right. So we're both enrolled. We didn't know we were going to be enrolled um, in Lynn Sachs's uh, Frames and Stanzas workshop offered through Beyond Baroque. And um, I didn't know any much about her, uh, but I read the description when it came through my feed from Beyond Baroque of their offerings at this time. And I thought, well, I love um, making these poem films. I used to just make them with Phil and I, my Mm -hmm. husband. Um, would make them and I hadn't done that in a while and I thought well I'd love to hear what somebody who's really devoted um, their career and time and life to this work um, so she's New York based uh, it's a f- uh, four week thing and um, we were we just happened to be put together as partners which was great because we had never worked together and um Jerry is a really good filmmaker, so I got lucky, right? Mm -hmm. And um, our assignment was to uh, write a poem and also to uh, do a minute of footage on our our phones or or small camera and then swap. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was given Jerry's footage to um, make to write a poem off of which I did with Golden Hour and then I wrote this poem Mask um, that he then made a a film for Mm -hmm. so it's really great and um, and it could be raw and rough the thing I like about Lynn Sachs is she's an experimental filmmaker um, and really comes from that sort of um, background and, and influence, um, which I, I like a lot. I mean, I like controlled filming, you know, where it's, it's more um, clear, like the, that you're doing, you're illustrating a narrative in the poem. But I also like the chance element of things being thrown together. These are pretty, these are pretty, well, you'll see mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. yeah. So the, the idea of video poems is, um, something i don't you know motion poems does them and there are a few different companies that do video poems and it's one of the things i don't know what, what do you think the elements that make a, a video poem work because it, it's different than than um film like the narrative yeah. style you know the poem is completely yeah. different and um right. you know and the language always should be at the forefront of a poem so then the video can be distracting if not so how do you how do you yeah. balance that out you think like what what what, what works know. for you like what what do you like I watching know. you know yeah that's that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of trying to figure out, and and, I, and it feels like there are two ways to go about it. Uh, you can kind of uh, almost follow or be one step behind the the narrative or the the, the content of the poem, mm-hmm. um, and so you're sort of um, uh, uh, embellishing it in that way or working in tandem with it, or the opposite, which is um, do something very sort of disruptive almost with the with the visual and then see how that comes out. Um, one of the, I mean, I've seen pieces, Lynn showed us pieces where the camera is, you know, the whole time it's trained through, um, you know, a, a crack in a window looking out onto a building across, you know, at an old woman who's sitting there, you know, just on a balcony. And then the poem is um, about some really, you know, uh, um, intense things going on, like the inner monologue of, of the speaker, perhaps in a, a um, war-torn or, or war-impacted war, um, um, place, and it's personal. But so it's almost becomes like, like it's the it's the woman of oh, this random strange sh- stranger coming through her head. I mean, so uh, and and sometimes it's just the chance um, uh, uh, meshing or 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 caroming or or mashup of of um, of the visual or a, or a auditory you know a sonic thing um, with whatever's being spoken. But what doesn't seem to work is if there's too much. Um, competition between 
right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's the thing yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put uh, it. Um, well, yeah. this is a current events poem, which is why we're on a poetry spot live. For, so, do you want to just say a little bit about what it's about before we play it? Like, you know, obviously, mask. So, is this going to be mask? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, one of the uh, another um, challenge of this class that I really liked and is good for me is we had to like write a po- like. You got to write a poem, you know, and then you got to send it. So, so, um, um, with, in a, in a very short span of time. So this poem is called mask. Um, I was thinking about, you know, masks and I was remembering, um, something that another poet had said about, um, liking to wear the mask right now because of things going on with him. And so I kind of started with that idea and, um, uh, and then went into some of so, sort of the broader and then the personal. Um, I just kind of went with whatever was coming into my mind and um, uh, disturbing me yeah. <laughs> or yeah. or um, intriguing me. You know, just sort mm-hmm. of playing with, with one line to the next. That's cool. Well, Michelle, yeah. Bain, thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to play this for everybody um, after I hang up with you. So um, have a good uh, rest of your day. And thanks for sharing this with us. It's interesting thanks, to see. Sam. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. And so it was Michelle Bidding, whose poem "Mask," a uh, current events poem, is um, produced by Gary, Jerry Garcia. Um, so two LA LA poets here, and um, we put it on the screen view. I wanted to make sure there's no echo with uh, with Michelle. That's why we hung up. But here, this is about a minute long. So let's watch this. Let me get it sort of framed right. Hang on. Where's the edge? It's a little too big. Okay, this is a little better. Okay, let's 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 go with this. Ready? Here's a mask by Michelle Bidding. A source tells CNN instead of perhaps slightly less so. Sometimes I like wearing it so I can hide from the world. And anyway, the CDC says to go without is like stepping into fire with your bare feet on. As a kid, I walked on the beach over colorful piles of glass and worn down wood, off things from the earth, skin, and innards. These days, I make mud out of paper and whatever my mind's sloughing off. That and worry about my son who's been in his pajamas since the virus hit nine months ago, making it hard to walk about without your cells getting cut. The whole human suit perpetually exposed. Well, we are always kind of burning, aren't we? One giant pyre of experience, flaming in secret until we're not. I'm thinking a long, cool ride into deepest green sea would benefit everyone right now, especially my son, who at 24 years and 200 pounds, a mind sharp and stunted as they come, is another boy stranded on a land of magical thinking, lost in epic dust, He hasn't said it for a while, but I can hear his thoughts. Invisible is disease. Oh, I'll never grow up. Never grow up. Never grow up. No, not I. Not I. Not me. So that was Michelle Bidding's poem, Mask, in the video produced by Jerry Garcia. Um, And to find the uh, opposite version, which is, um, I'll make sure it doesn't play here. Hang on. Um... I think you just have to X out of it. Um, yeah, so go to um, Vimeo.com here and um, just type in Jerry Garcia. And you can find the other poem that was a Bidding's poem, Michelle Bidding's poem, Mask. And um, if you click over here, we would see uh, uh, Jerry Garcia's poem with a video by Michelle Bidding. So go to Vimeo.com and just search for Jerry Garcia. Uh, that's Jerry, J-E-R-R-Y, Garcia. And... Uh, check that out um, but i thought that'd be a lot of fun to share so hope you enjoyed that and um the other thing i'm just going to share is, is uh, alejandro um it says he's live now so let me let me try him again huh it's not connecting today waiting but it's not just it's just not connected with alex and now this is the right account it says he's live hmm but we're not connecting today so i'm just gonna have to share this poem with you this uh let's see yep that's not him no answer all right well um you know it's live 
A lot of video will do this to you, but today's poem is uh, by Alejandro Escudé. We'll just play it for you. Um, now, I love this poem because I don't know much about soccer or Maradona or um, any of this. And, um, you know, I, I like learning about things in poems whenever possible. And, um, you know, Maradona was such a big influence on a lot of people. I'll read, I'll read, um, I'll read Alejandro's note here. Um, he says, The death of Diego Armando Maradona is a momentous historical occasion for my home country of Argentina. He was a towering figure in the world of soccer, a true sports icon. His life was one of great controversy, his notorious behavior on and off the field, his battle with drug abuse, his strained relationship with close family, friends, owners, coaches, players, and fellow countrymen became legendary. It was a strange serendipity, serendipitous night when I had the luck, the luck of meeting the soccer star. Yet what I remember most was those arguably pathetic faces on the restaurant windows crowding the panes to see Maradona. They were there the entire time my family and I were at the restaurant. Maradona was powerful and gifted and beloved by people all over the globe, especially those on the lowest rung of Western society. And, um, oh, let me see. Oh, here he is. So, um, maybe we have, let's try it again. I might get Alejandro after all. We'll see if he answers this time. Hey, Alex. Glad we could connect. I don't know what was going on before. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no problem. Um, you're, I don't have video, though, if you want to click on your video. Okay, but... hold on a second. <laughs> no problem. Um, man, I'm trying. I'm not used to this. Hold on a second. I do a lot of Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've, you've been on this show and, uh, and uh, had the Rattlecast, so I, I figured that you'd be good to go. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I guess Zoom erases your memory. Of Skype, the uh, the phone but the camera button is right between the hang up and the microphone. Oh, God, God. There you God. go. Okay. Hey, okay. So how you doing, Alex? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So uh, the light here. Yeah. So um, do you want to tell us just a little bit about about what Maradona meant to to Argentina? He was probably the biggest star in Argentinian history, I, I assume. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He was uh, just a you know a major icon, kind of like our. You know, we had uh, Kobe Bryant recently pass. It was kind of like that, but bigger because mm -hmm. it's, it's worldwide. Uh, yeah. Well, Kobe Bryant was worldwide too, but this is like soccer's more major, I think, in more countries. Yeah, it's definitely the world sport, soccer, which I never understood. I'm, uh, maybe because, uh, you know, I'm a sports guy, <laughs> but I cannot understand um you know I, I think it's maybe maybe just because i'm uh you know not built for uh agility and endurance or something so i never liked playing it so it made me uh not uh not watch it or something but um it's closer to like a pastime yeah so like uh it's like baseball here mm -hmm. yeah i can i can just definitely appreciate that 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 you yeah. sort of you know it's something to and then and then when the goal comes because there's only a few goals in the game it's like the most exciting th you know <laughs> like a huge adrenaline rush so You're it's like uh, a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um but so when, when maradona died at, at age 60 he was very young um he was yeah. he was laid to rest at state at the the pink house in uh, argentina where you know uh, which avita made famous given those speeches off of um right just, just such a huge figure um I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say about, about Maradona before you read the poem? Uh, no, not really. I think it says a lot because the poem talks about some of the history mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of what he meant. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Second? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and read it. I'll put it up on screen for everybody at home. Okay. So, Maradona <clears throat> in Buenos Aires. He was a squat, curly-haired, pug-nosed man, and he walked into the high-end asado restaurant with five beautiful women and his manager, the infamous Coppola, who father said had led Diego into drogas. I often wondered how a man could handle the pressure of a World Cup could be led into drogas, but my father would become enraged at, on this point especially after Diego light, laid in state at the pink house, light blue and white flags keeping the multitudes at a respectful distance from the decrepit, bloated body of the soccer king. I once approached, I once approached the man himself 
feigning I spoke only English so as to garner more respect, and asked him, Coppola translated, to sign my used airline ticket, a readable scrawl. And I went back to our table, gave my father the ticket. He smiled the forced smile of the ungrateful. And I took another bite of a steak the size of South America. There were poor faces pressed against the windows of the restaurant, young men, boys, peeking in to see Maradona, to ogle this ferocious little man who was pressured into drogas, who scored a goal with the hand of God to take the World Cup, who single-handedly placed a backwater Italian town center stage, and who famously came from nothing, de la nada, as if a man could come from nothing, as if a player this great could ever be led to do anything, to be anything less than boundless. Yeah, I just I just love that ending. Um, and and I watched a um, highlight reel of um, of Maradona, and um, it was really actually it was moving just to to watch like I don't know there's something about about youth and that ex- exuberance that he seemed to have while he was playing, and then and then to be gone now. Um, I don't know. There was something about um, just the passage of time that comes up when you look at old old footage like that. Um, yeah. Did you? I, I imagine that that when the hand of God goal happened, did, were you watching that as a kid? Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember. I remember just uh, watching it and talking about it and how it was a big how it was a big deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, I imagine. I, I just. I mean, not being a soccer fan, I don't know, but I imagine it was one of the biggest sports, um, you know, moments in in history internationally. I mean, the like the shot heard around the world in baseball. We we talk yeah. about. Um, you know, and if for anybody who hasn't watched it, he, he, he was going up for a header to score a goal and he, he used his hand, but with yeah. no instant replay, nobody could, and nobody, you know, could prove that he did it. And so, yeah. um, and I think like, you know, 30 years later, he, uh, acknowledged just like a few years ago that, that he, he did it with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was hard to tell cause he was so fast yeah. and, and so small mm-hmm. that you really couldn't, his movements were so fast, like kind of like messy today. Yeah. So it was a little bit of sleight of hand, you know. You, I mean, even if you look at it today, you can't tell. It looks like it could be his head too. It it really so, does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a I don't know a cool, I don't know a great great athlete, great hero. And thanks for um, you know, putting it down in the poetry record. Uh, that's always sure. something we like to do in uh, Poet Respond here. Thanks, Alex. No problem, man. Of of course, anytime. <laughs> yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Okay. You too. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it was Alejandro Rescue Day with uh, his poem for today. Um, Maradona and Buenos Aires, and um, as always, it's nice to um, have poems, you know, you know, about events that um, you know, re-recording. This is we're kind of making a poetry almanac of um, what's going on in the world, and I think we're you know we eventually publish a lot of these as a actual anthology and stuff like that. Um, you know, maybe like a decade looking back in time or something like that, and and this will be one of the poems that we can uh, look back and see what ha- was happening, what people were talking about. Um, let's go to the open lines now. And once again, um, let's say goodbye to Alex, but, uh, once again, the, uh, phone number is 818-850-7727. Uh, that's 818-850-7727. Call in if you'd like to, uh, join by phone or send me a chat message to rattle poetry over Skype and we'll bring it in either way. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get to everybody today. I have to leave right at 10. Um, I have an appointment, so, um, we can't ext- extend it at all, but let's see how many we can get to. And I will go to people who haven't been on recently first. So, um, and then we'll go to uh, people who have been on. Cause we have a bunch of new people here. Let's see. Uh, let's do Keith Parsons. I don't think we've ever. Uh, yeah, we've never talked to Keith Parsons. And uh, let's give him a, a call first. I'll try to find Keith's poem as we go. Hey Keith, you're uh, you're live online. Can you hear me? Yeah, let me let me mute the Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I got to remind everybody that. Yeah, if if anybody's watching, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Periscope or YouTube, there's a delay, so um, yeah. you can't read your poem off the screen because you won't be timed up with it. And um, you also, just when I call you, turn it off so that um, you don't get confused by the delay and that's not like an echo in the background. It's like a thirty second delay. Um, we can't see yet if you want to click on your camera button, but if not, that's okay too. Uh, boom, 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 boom. 
Let's see how ridiculous I look. <laughs> there you go. You're coming in, I think. There you are. That's all right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good to see you. And I, I could tell you had a headset because you had great, great sound quality, which always helps uh, having a headset. So um, you, you have a Thanksgiving poem, I assume. This is the one you want to read? Yes. Is there anything you want to say about it before you, you jump in? Uh, no, I normally just, I normally just read them and, and let, people, let people think what they'll think. Okay, well, go ahead. I'll put it up for everybody and go ahead and read it whenever you're uh, ready. All right. Thanksgiving. One died the first week, almost half the first year, those Plymouth pilgrims living their privilege, leaving the less sponsored to die in England the old-fashioned way. Their governor, too, felled by stroke in the fields, and his wife, being weak, died weeks later, as noted. Neither saw the now quiescent Wampanoags bearing five butchered deer, they who had slaughtered ships some months before. Nor solicitous Squanto, his own people laid low by pestilence to non-existence, even as he laid gardening life hacks on his new neighbors. Thanksgiving, then, has always been a celebration of death and disease a weak neck inclined to heaven to avoid the cold eyes of reality, of reckoning. Why should this year be any different? Excellent. That was Keith Parsons with Thanksgiving. Um, Keith, you're calling from uh, Washington, D.C., it says. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Good old (laughs) D.C. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you you do it again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, bye. Okay, um, let's see. Who else have we? No, I think this, um, I'm not sure if this number is going to work because it's an international call. I'm getting a weird single signal. Hello? Hey, this is Tim with Rattle. Did you want to share a poem? Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. All right, I don't. Yeah, I have you on the phone here, but <laughs> I I'm still seeing the poet who just read. Yeah. Oh, is this uh, who who am I talking to? Bill Friedman in Israel. Oh, hey, Bill. Um, let me. Um, do you want to just let's? Well, why don't you turn that off? Because you you can't just close out of that. Because uh, you know we can hear it in the turn, background. Turn and which can... turn which off? The turn screen, your video. Everything? Turn your video. Yeah. Turn your video turn off. Turn the video off. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll mute. I'll mute you until you do that. Yeah, wherever you're watching, just like close out of that window completely. Yeah, 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 close the whole thing. There we go. Right, I I just did. Okay, (laughs) now I can't see you, but that's okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Since you called over the phone, we can't. But but this might be a better way because the Skype connection is always um a little a little choppy. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so your poem for today, you had a luck of the walk. Is that what you wanted to share? Yeah, luck of the walk, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, is there anything you want to say to introduce it before you read it? Uh, no, it's a light poem. There's nothing very special about it, but, uh, you know, I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a, uh, <laughs> a flighty little thing, but I enjoy doing it. So, uh, yeah, okay, so you'll see. I hope people enjoy it a little bit anyway, okay? I'm sure you will. Go ahead and read whenever I have it. It's on screen for everybody. Okay, sure. Uh, The Luck of the Walk. When Billy Collins goes out walking, he sees you there, knows at a glance where you're going or returning from and why, knows what the look you throw his way implies. If it's winter, it's mice he sees scurrying across the snow and again he knows precisely what they're up to looking for places to hide he says in their new homes discovering for heaven's sake their kitchens how in the world does he know this is it written in their eyes their whiskers the twitch and radar swivel of their ears it must be he has a gift he has but it's three of four parts luck it's where you live and what and whom you see 
mainly how generously and fruitfully they reveal themselves, tell you with a blink of eye why you're melancholy or surprisingly delighted to be alive, remind you why poems matter, how they're born, or what you ought to learn before you die. They do all that for Billy, but I have no such luck. Where I live, everyone out walking wears a mask. So hard and impolitely as I stare, I can never tell if they're on their way to rape or rob someone or on their way back home. Thanks for sharing that, Bill. And that was uh, William Friedman with uh, The Luck of the Walk. And you know, you've been on, you know, we've talked to you like, you know, every few months. And uh, I always mm-hmm. ask, but how are things doing in Israel now? Ah, uh, uh, well, we're in trouble. We're in yeah. trouble. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the numbers went way, way up. So they sort of closed down halfway, but uh, we don't have this thing really under control. It's not as bad as the U.S., mm-hmm. but we're not, doing, we're not doing well. We did very well at the beginning, but we're not doing well since. And we have a prime minister whose mind is elsewhere. Mm-hmm. He's waiting for his trial on three counts of fraud and the like. Oh, so interesting. He has no time for this. Yeah. And, and that, that's right. Netanyahu? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah, I think I yeah. heard that, but I, I haven't heard much about that. Interesting. Well, thanks so much for, for calling and sharing that poem, Bill. And it's nice to hear your, your clearly the phone worked really well. That's right. That's much better. Thanks a lot, Tim. You have yeah. a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was William Friedman uh, from, from in Israel calling. Um, let's, do, let's do Don Krieger. He's, uh, he's been on before, but isn't on that often. I think he attached... Hey, Don, can you hear me? Are you there? Hey, Tim. Hey, Don, let me, uh, let me fit you in a little better. How, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for calling. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm trying to get your poem. Let's see you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so so introduce your poem. What What is it about before we before I, when I get that screen? Actually, I think you might have to. I submit. I submitted one, mm-hmm. to, but I also I also sent you one. Um, yeah, that's what I was just opening. Legacy of the Golden Calf. Is that what? Yeah, you yeah. To read? Okay. Yeah, that's the one I'd like to read because that one actually is even more apropos than the one I wrote. Okay, perfect. Let me get it on screen. But introduce it. Like, let me know. Uh, tell us what's about. It, well, this poem is apropos of a couple of news items this week. The most recent was the Supreme Court ruling against. Uh, Governor Cuomo of New York, who was uh, trying to restrict religious gatherings in New York to as a public health measure, and the the Supreme Court ruled he couldn't do it; that it was uh, abridging religious freedom, and it was un he was doing it uneven. I didn't read the opinion; you know, it was the same old stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Let me read the poem okay it's, yeah go it's ahead a, it's a good one this this originally appeared in the blue nib that's why i didn't send it to you ah gotcha uh <clears throat> legacy of the golden calf she had my love and her twin sons their lives filled with learning and prayer each with 12 children of their own i recited the prayers with them A thousand men close around me, women in a mezzanine at the back, the great shul at 770 Eastern Parkway, the world's home for their faith. When we said the Elenu, they all spit on the floor and on each other in the crush. Disgust for idols to cleanse that ancient taint to the tongue And because their Rebbe had spit 40 years before. These days with the bug, how many will bear death home to those open wombs? After we sat all together at dinner, I asked if the women spit too. I asked out of disgust and for the children. No one answered. I never saw her again. 
Thanks for sharing that. It was Don Krieger with uh, Legacy of the Golden Calf. Thanks so much for calling in and sharing that, Don. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye. bye yeah, and as we were playing that, I uh, put Don's face on the screen. I wonder what you think about that. I keep wondering if um, that's something we should do as the poet reads, or is that distracting? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'm a, I've sort of we did it. If you watch like the Rattlecast, we do that uh, a few episodes, and other episodes we don't. And um, I can't decide, so um, let, put it down to a vote. Voice your opinion. Do you like seeing the poet's little tiny head, or do you want to just see the words? I I know I lean toward just seeing the words, but. Um, but if you like the face, we could we could start doing that if it's uh, if it, that's the consensus opinion. Let's try this three one zero number. I'm not sure who that's going to be, um, but we'll find out in a second. Hey, this is Tim with Rattle. Did you want to share a poem? Oh, I would love to. Thank you very very much. Yeah, I hear I hear myself in the background a little bit. So why don't you turn off that first of all? Okay. All right. I'm going to meet you until you do, but. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And then you can play it and watch yourself back uh, back later. Um, so so who am I talking to first? I, I didn't ask. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Sally Borey. Ah, okay. Let me find you, your poem. Did you email it or did you submit it? Um, I submitted it and it's called I Am an American. Okay, let me... Um... Let me find it really oh, quick. You're amazing to keep this going on YouTube while you're doing this, too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, uh, there's a delay, so it comes up later a little bit. But, okay. So, um, so I'm an American. Do you want to introduce the poem and, and like, just explain what it's about? Um, I'll say a couple things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I uh, have been, felt as though um, in this country with all the people that are getting evicted and going hungry, that they're, it's, it's not as much in the news as it should be. And so I feel like many people are forgotten, and, um, and, and there might be some uh, assumptions people make about, pe about them. So that's, that's why I wrote this poem. Okay, excellent. Well, why don't you go ahead and read it? I'll put it on screen for everybody at home. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much for including me. This is my first time, and I'm thrilled. Yeah, well, it's great to have first-time callers. We've been doing this since, like, March. I think we started this uh, show with um, when, the, when everybody started to be locked down and things, and there were all the coronavirus poems, and uh, we've been doing it. And we're, it's just fun to do every Sunday. So um, hope you join us again soon. But, but let's hear this poem for, for today. All right, thank you. Um, my poem is called I Am an American. I am an American. You say, what hyphen American? I am an American. You say that doesn't fit. I am white. You say I'm a racist. I love God. You say I'm simple. I'm good with my hands. You say I'm stupid. You judge, you judge, you judge, you judge. My job's now in Mexico. You say that's a good thing. My job moved to China. You say, even better. I pay my taxes. You say there's no money. You could be me, one job loss away, one bad pain RX, no family backdrop. You say, vote red. I say, drop dead. You say, vote blue. I say, fuck you. Too tired to be desperate. What can I do? I can be kind. You say that's weak. I can love. You say that's weak. I'm stronger than you know because you don't know. See me. It's not catching. Talk to me. Then you decide. Thanks so much for that. Was Sally uh, Bory? Am I saying that right? Sally Bory? Yes, that's right. Yeah, from um, Sally Bory from uh, Silverwood Spring, Maryland. Thanks so much for calling in and sharing that and sharing that sentiment, Sally. It's, it's always nice to hear perspectives. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you including me. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good one, and hope you call in again soon. Okay, thank you. Yep, bye. Bye. Yes, that was Sally Bory uh, with her poem, I Am an American. Let's, um, call, oh, we, oh, Sally, uh, I should have uh, done Skype with you, but the phone works well, too. So, yeah, so um, if you have, you know, if you have both phone and Skype, just pick one 
or else I, um, Bill, Bill did that too. And, um, you know, I just go for whichever I happen to see first. So, um, but Skype is better. If you have Skype, just chat, just uh, send me a message over Skype and then we can see it as you call, as you uh, read too. Although sometimes the sound quality is better on the phone, like with Bill. Um, let's call up Hank Greenspan. He hasn't, he hasn't uh, been on in a while though. We've had him before. Um, let me find his poem. Hello. Hey, Hank, how are you doing today? I'm good. I should I should uh, hang up the other thing. Yeah, hang up the other thing and then and click your camera button too so we can see if you, if okay. you want. Okay. Try to find the camera button. It's, it's on the screen between the hang up and the, and the mute. Ah, got it. Got it, got it, got yeah. it. All right. All right. Excellent. Well, we see you and we yeah. hear you now. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. Hanging in like everybody else. Yeah. And, um, and where are you calling from? Yeah. I can't remember. This is Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ah, ah the great state of Michigan. The okay. great state of Michigan, which got, became sort of notorious, but we're actually very nice here and there are only a few not nice people. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've been to Michigan a bunch of times and, and I always have a great okay. time and, and like the people there. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised. Yeah, um, we're basically a pretty mellow state, although you'd never know it from the news as of late. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, so so your, your poem was buffaloed that you wanted to share, right? Yeah. I, I tweaked it a little from what I originally sent, but mm -hmm. yes. And, and the tweaks will be obvious if, if uh, you know, it's right. Um, yeah. And it's simply uh, a kind of response. I'm more of a playwright than a poem, much more. And it sort of comes off that way. And initially, it was almost like a little skit I was playing around with. Um, and then I decided to try to make it some version of a poem. I'm not sure it is, uh, but uh, it was in response to my learning that uh, Native American Heritage Day is the day after Thanksgiving. Um, and so it just passed, and there was essentially nothing in the media about it. Yeah, I remember reading I this poem yesterday, I think, and um, and I didn't know about it until I read this poem. Yeah. And, you know, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it just sort of passed by. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not Native American, I will say, but um, you know, I feel what a lot of people feel in terms of the importance of that history, obviously, for all of us. Um, and I also had heard recently from a friend who did one of those ancestry DNA tests. And mm -hmm. anyway, the two came together and created this sort of goofy little thing, which, as I say, I don't know what it is precisely genre-wise, but um, it was to be fun and, and hopefully interesting. Uh, Excellent. Well, hear. yeah, let's hear so, it. I have it on screen for everybody at home, so go ahead okay. whenever you're ready. Okay. So uh, the title now is 28% Buffaloed. I know a guy who did a test and learned his spit was 28% Cherokee. Dear Bureau of Indian Affairs, my spit turned up 28% Cherokee. What do I get for that? After 23 months, he heard back to his surprise by phone. What do you want? A buffalo, big one. We don't do that. What do you do? Help with college tuition. Don't need that. How about Sunni buffalo? Don't need that. I want a buffalo. I'll take 28% of a buffalo. How? The part with the horns. You'd kill a pole buffalo just for the horns? Pale face rules. Goodbye, sir. Wait. How about Oklahoma, the original Broadway cast recording? 23 months later, the BIA sent him 28% of the original Broadway cast recording of Oklahoma. He listened while Cherokee Nation, Nation outside of Tulsa was being trampled by COVID-19. You're doing fa- Homa. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. That was Hank Greenspan with his poem, um, Originally titled Buffalo, now it's called 28% Buffalo, I think you said? Yeah, just goofing around. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Thank Hank. You. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, let's see. Who should we do next? We had that. We had that. Michelle Bidding. Okay. You know, we're, we're kind of, um, let's see. We might be able to squeeze in Angela and Nivy. Let's try. Call up Angela. Angela Gartner, of course. Tim. Hey, Angela. How are you doing today? Good. I'm going to leave my camera off today. So. Okay. No, no, <laughs> no problem. I, uh, 
I know those days. <laughs> I wish I could turn my camera on. Especially, uh... Oh, wait. Let, let me just close you out here. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'll mute you for a second. Okay, you're good. Okay. Um, so what poem did you want to share today, Angela? Leftovers. Leftovers. Okay. I have it here. I will pull it up. Is there anything... Uh, obviously, I'm thinking leftover uh, Thanksgiving, right? It is, but it's just a big metaphor. Because I was just thinking... You know, looking at the turkey and, you know, cut it up and, mm-hmm. and you know, eaten and everything on the table. I just was feeling that it kind of represented the mess that we have in our elections and our democracy. It just, you know, I, I was hoping after the election we would, it would be over, but it's not over. So yeah, I just, yeah. you know, I, I feel like we need to, you know, it's like dinner, you know, once you eat dinner, you need to wrap it up and clean it up and it's, it's nothing's wrapped up. So it's just a big metaphor. I was just thinking after I took my Thanksgiving dinner. So yeah, the carcass of a bird is a great, great metaphor. So for sure. Um, I have on screen for a really, so go ahead and read it. Leftovers. I am tired of seeing the carcass of a bird. It's been shredded and picked with bits of crumpled meat hanging off its bones. Remnants of the feast is yet to be cleaned. The stuffing, which is over half eaten, filled with a distinctive blend of spices and a soft dough, must be saved and stored. A two-syllable, na- a two-syllable first name, which disrupts which disrupted our happy place is being shooed away. The belt on my pants that I loosen will be tightening in the upcoming days. I hope we can mix up the good parts of our leftovers to create a savory soup. Excellent. Thanks so much. It was leftovers by Angela Gardner. Thanks for sharing that, Angela. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Let me, um, let me see. Um, yeah, so Allison Campbell is sending me a message here, but, but she has a poem for the, um, street view, which is, um, for the prompt on Tuesday, last Tuesday though, unfortunately. Um, let's see, is it best to ring you? Okay. Um, you know, I don't know, let's do, um, let's do Nivy really quick and then let's do, um, um carlton johnson had a poem he wanted us to read for him and then if we have time we'll do allison too um hello hey nivy how you doing today i'm doing good too thank you how about you i'm doing great it's a good morning so far not too much has gone wrong um let me see so see so your poem um did you submit it mm-hmm. okay let me, let me pull it up then um it's called ai Okay. Um, and do you want to introduce it before, as I as I find it? What's it about? So I basically read this article on the BBC mm-hmm. about how there was increased funding for more research on artificial intelligence, and there were these words in the heading called AI doctor's assistant. And if it's successful, what's it apparently supposed to do is sort of give suggestions for drugs and treatment options that then doctors can decide on. Mm-hmm. So that, that sort of surprised me. I mean, like, what else is left for the machines to take over these days? <laughs> yes, they do help our lives, but then this is, like, taking things a bit too far, maybe. I don't know. We should see what it looks like when it comes up. But I was like, imagine if the machines rule this. AI will then truly be the omni, the omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient thing that we just all have to answer to. Yeah, so that's yeah, it's a strange, a strange are, are you familiar with the story about um the... um the AI that determined how COVID works how with, co- a, yes, with a Brady kind of yes, storm. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, was, they're kind of, um, I don't know. They're taking over everything. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, which, that's the short answer. Which is sort of good and bad like everything else, I guess. But uh, exactly. yeah, a little, little creepy exactly. if, if uh, anybody, do you ever watch I mean, the show on dark, or Black Mirror? <laughs> Black Mirror. Exactly. I get, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. So uh, this is sort of one of the negatives, maybe. I mean, don't get me wrong. It does help us a lot. But then I just thought, what it would it be like if it took over everything? So this is just a really, really short take on that. So mm-hmm. that's what this is about. Okay. Well, go ahead. I have it up for everybody. Go ahead and read it. Okay. The cloud is alive. Electrical mind whirring. It's eye all seeing. 
thinking no more. The machines decide for us. The future is here. Thanks for sharing that. That's definitely a creepy poem. <laughs> I, Actually, I, the last line was even creepier. I made it like the future is loading. And then I was like, okay, no, it's already here. It's, it's, it's done loading, basically. I, it's just waiting to be installed and updated on every system. So I just tweaked yeah, that a bit. I think it, it kind of, it definitely is. You know, through social media, it sort of is engineering our opinions already. because And it's engineering it based it on is. conflict, which is just a, mm-hmm. a terrible it, it's way totally to... It's wrong, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for sharing that, Nivi. And um, I will try to have a, a day where I live in the world and not on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, my poem for last week, uh, Theratocast, was actually from Iceland. Ah. I know the letters were all scrambled and all, but it was Iceland. That was the first picture that popped up on the screen was ah, Iceland. Very cool. Well, thanks for thanks for calling it's, today. It's, written, and, and it's then... written in the corner there, like the bottom left-hand corner mm-hmm. of the image has the country name that it's from. Ah, okay. Okay, cool. Well, uh... I am... Fingers crossed going to make it for the next one. Fingers crossed. Let's not jinx it yet. Let's okay. Not jinx it yet. <laughs> well, we'll see you Tuesday maybe then. See you at your station. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Um, let's see. So then, um, yeah. So for Allison, let's see. You know what? I think we'll just, um, even though it's not a poet respond poem, um, Allison Allison Campbell sent this and got the days confused, and, and we should share it because she took the time to write this poem, Unnamed Road, from um, randomstreetview.com, which was the prompt for this week. Let's call up, if we can connect with Alison Campbell, let's uh, share this poem for her since she didn't get to share it on Tuesday. And then I have a poem really quick to read from Carlton, then we'll do my psyku really quick, and then i got to get out of here. If Alison answers. Let's see. Well, Allison's not answering, so um, we will do. Let's see. Maybe she'll she'll message me before. Um, let's see. And before we got some other people too. Um, okay, we have another another. Um, somebody sent their their ID. This is uh, Letitia Tunbridge from um somewhere in the uk and uh let's let me if i can find her we'll we'll do that let's see let me share this poem here and yet so i'm trying to connect we'll see if she can answer the phone here we have a couple minutes left this is and yet about the lockdowns and things from the uk oh she's not online even though she uh, she emailed me earlier it would have worked, I, I you know, but um, um, she's not online anymore. I guess she probably left when she, uh, when I had, hadn't replied yet. Let's do. Um, we have this poem by Carl, uh, Carl Carlton Johnson or Carl Johnson, laughing out loud, and it is based on. Let's see. I'm gonna put it over here. Let me put it in this word doc really quick so we don't don't dox him. Um, okay, so it's based on this article here. Laughing, you can't really see it, it's too little, too small. Laughing is good for you, for your mind and your body. Here's what research shows. So it's a science, I, you know, I like science, and um, a science article about laughter's physical power. So check that out at uh, theconversation.com. Laughing is good for your mind. And your body, here's what research shows. Um, And then his poem is, uh, his poem is right here. This is um, Laughing Out Loud by Carl Johnson. Norman Cousins once wrote, Laughter is the best medicine. Sometimes it is a curse to laugh when things are worse than they appear, but don't fear that albatross slung around your neck like a noose. Wait, is it too soon? 
or to look heavenward, hoping for something unsung, to burble up a pot of water on the boil. You spoil a scene with a titter or a smirk. Then you break all manner of decorum. You snicker at your Uncle Frank's funeral, and your Aunt Martha whispers, you'll burn in hell, leering over her cat's eye glasses. But the bright mustard stain on her black dress grabs. You chortle loud, and now, as all the attendees turn reverently, solemnly, I casting a pall and an audible shh, Aunt Martha's face, now red like the lobster you had at their 50th anniversary ten years ago. After the internment, you get a good laugh on watching the Three Stooges and the old black and white in your bedroom with a large bowl of rocky road. Your mother calls from two floors below, but all you hear is Curly's nyuck, nyuck, nyuck. Hell never was this good. And that is Carlton Johnson's poem, Laughing Out Loud, based on uh, Laughter is the Best Medicine, that article we, we showed you there. Laughing is good for your mind and your body. And um, Carlton also mentioned he has this new book out, A Thimble of Time, um, which you can find on Amazon. So if you type in uh, Carlton Johnson, A Thimble um, a thimble of time you can find it on amazon so check that out if you if you've been enjoying carlton johnson's poetry he's been a regular guest here um uh, watching the uh the, the videos and uh sharing his work for for a long time so uh, check out his new book a thimble of time and now for my psyku for today i i grabbed this article which caught my attention um this is uh let me put it on screen for you this is DNA synthesis for true random number generation. And as you know, we do the, um, the um, critique of the week on Friday, and I have to use a random number generator to pick, um, to, to pick the poets. And so we, I go to random.org, which uses um, atmospheric interference as a way to generate random numbers. Most random, generator, random number generators are just using an algorithm, and um, actually if you know the input, you can sort of um, disencrypt it. And um, so the real, the only random number generation we have that, that's, that's true is um, things that are based on physical processes like that, like, um, like um, you know, the, the heat signatures for electrons moving through a wire or, or white noise, some kind of, you know, some kind of um, static. So, so random.org uses atmospheric white noise. This, uh, this team of researchers use DNA synthesis. So they, um, they took the um, ACGT nucleotides and um, synthesize them randomly creating randomness in a test tube uh, for the first time and and since you can synthesize a lot of um, you know long strings of DNA and a lot of molecules that way um, you end up with huge amounts of randomness uh, seven million gigabytes of randomness in this in one synthesis run which I was also interesting to me because I used to run a um, synthesizer when I worked in an RNA lab at the University of Rochester back in the day so um, it's cool to see this randomness in a can. And my Psyku is right here. Canned randomness, as if there weren't enough. Canned randomness, as if there weren't enough. That is my Psyku for the day, a haiku based on science. Always a pleasure to share. Thanks so much for, uh, for watching that. And now next week's guest in the Rattlecast coming up on Tuesday is going to be Jim Peterson. Um, Jim Peterson is a, just a fabulous poet and human being. Uh, really looking forward to talking to him. Um, he comes highly recommended as someone we should have on the show, and um, I always appreciate those kind of recommendations, and I'm really looking forward to it. Loves his book, The Horse Who Bears Me Away, new out from Red Hen Press. Um, and the prompt for this week, I have to look it up. I can never remember. I haven't written my poem yet, obviously. The prompt for this week, oh, yeah, is what's on the other side of that door? So write a poem and tell us what's on the other side of that door. That's your prompt. Very open-ended, but gives you something to start with. And uh, then join us for the open mic after we talk to Jim Peterson. But uh, that's Jim Peterson on Rattle Cast number 69, Tuesday, December 1st, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Looking forward to seeing you then, and I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday in the meantime. Thanks. Bye.